It's time once again to slip into your camel, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Turkey Calls. Antler Action. Family Tradition Tree Stands. And Twisted Mind Bow Strings. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Edmark Journal Podcast, everybody. Your host, Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin on a glorious Sunday afternoon. A little windy, but the temperatures are rising, Danny. What's mm-hmm. going on? A little windy, right? Yeah, just a little was bit. That, was that, that? That's an understatement. I tell you what, I was sitting there this morning. I was laying in bed, and I was like, it actually started last night, but man, it was like wow. And I, I think my, uh, my cover to my stack coming out of my bathroom up on top of the roof gone is loose. Oh, the rattle! I can hear. Ur, ur, ur. <laughs> what is that noise? But yes, the winds are kicking, but the temperatures are rising. Yeah, you know, a lot of good stuff coming. Oh. Uh, Time to get out in the woods, look for sheds. We've had a couple days where we haven't had any rain. (laughs) Right. Finally. Finally. So that's good. You can get out in the woods. My woods was soaked. I tried to take the dogs for uh, kind of a walk. Swim? Well, yeah, yeah, it was more (laughs) of a swim, and I more or less had to uh, basically wash them off because they were pretty black. Okay. So (laughs) hopefully the woods are drying up a little bit more. People get out there and do some shed hunting. It's a good time. Yeah, absolutely. This week is supposed to be decently weathered. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's just jump into this show right now. Uh, let's we've, go for it. We've got an interview for you that we did back at, uh, in January at ATA. Exciting interview. Bill Eppards, the Elite Pro Staff PSC, this guy, and as well as Moss Yoke. Um, I heard an interview with him this weekend, yesterday actually, 45 years with PSC and with Pete Shepley, real good friends with him, and then uh, 29 years with Moss Yoke. So, Not a bad track record. No, and... Uh, you know, the guy's just involved in the outdoors heavily. He's a former uh, law enforcement. Yep. And just a great, great all-around spokesperson for the outdoors. So, uh, you know, let's just get into the interview from ATA with Bill Efforts. Hey, it's Mike Adams and Dan DeFall here back at ATA 2018 Indianapolis. And we are having the pleasure of sitting here talking with Bill Efforts who is on the Elite Pro Staff PSE Archer. We're sitting in the trailer. You can't see it, but we're going to bring it here to you live. Right, exactly. And, uh, we're in the trailer, and we, 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 we got him in a corner, so we, we get to ask him he, he 15 escape. minutes of his time. He can't, he can't leave. Right, Thanks to Dan right. so. for, getting, for getting him over here. But, uh, you know, welcome to the show, Bill. Um, Thank you very much for having me. I tell you what, uh, talking with Dan last night about your background and everything, you, you, all the, <laughs> he talks about how many animals you have mounted in your house. He says it's a it's a it's, there's a lot of animals in there, and you've shot the African Big Five. But, I have, I have. So, with that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something at you because you've been in this business for how long now? I've been with PSE 43 years in October, and I've been with Moss Yoke for 28 years. See, and and so you've been around a little bit, and uh, why are you do everything archery? Is it is it the love, the passion? What what drives you to do all archery? Well, it's a challenge, you know. I mean, it, it, I start shooting a bow and arrow set, and and uh, you know, I got in the got in the business with a guy who used to work for PSC, retired from me, Don Castro. Uh, I hunted with Kurt Gowdy back in the day, and and I shot my first antelope, but they said I'd never be able to do it shooting an antelope with a bow and arrow, and I did it. And lo and behold, I started shooting a bow and. And uh, never had any coaching, and and uh, been very blessed to be at the right place at the right time, and and start shooting animals. Then they got me start doing hunting seminars, and lo and behold, 43 years later, now I do sports shows and uh, shoot the world championships and going down the line. That's that's just what awesome. a career. That, I mean, that's 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 a heck of a career. And that's not his day job. No, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you you actually do uh, used to work in law enforcement too, correct? I um. Uh, I retired from the sheriff's department with 30 years service five years ago, and now I uh, I protect a judge uh, two days a week. So, uh, you know, I've had a great, I've been very blessed, and and it's guys that give you the breaks to get in the industry, and I'm sponsored by you know almost all the top com- companies, and uh, you know it, it's being at the right place at the right time. And I get this question asked a lot by young people: How do you get started in the industry? And uh, you know, it's keeping your nose clean and, and, and not burning any bridges and, 
and you know just helping people out and that's how it gets going absolutely and that that's good advice for anybody just keep your nose clean keep it clean and he said helping people out you know educating people giving them good information and helping them advance that's the absolutely. key to it i think you know and, and speaking of that since you've been in this so long for one of the questions i do have is what is the biggest innovation in archery that you've seen since you've been around it well you know i've seen it all and uh uh you, you think you've been in it so long what's next it's not going to get any better and then lo and behold you know, we got the best engineers, I think, in the industry, and they come up with something different. Like the system we have now uh, on our bows is called the Evolve system, the Evolve cam system. And what this allows you to do, it allows you to have any let off and gives you that, that let off that you want from 90, 85, 70%, 65%. It allows you to let off without using a bow press by adjusting two set screws, and it allows you to let off. So if you have a bad shoulder, and, and, and the older you get, believe me, you'll figure this out, is that you can shoot 50 pounds now, where in the old days you would have to shoot 65 pounds to get the kinetic energy, which right now you don't have to do that. And, and the accuracy and, and the forgiveness of these bows these days is phenomenal, and that's what amazes me about how these engineers keep coming up with, uh, with, with these designs. Like we have a, the Stealth, the new uh, Carbon Stealth. That's a carbon bow that weighs 2 and a half pounds. And, and, you know, when you're hunting, I hunted two weeks ago, 14 below uh, zero. And here, if you've got a metal bow in your hand, believe me, it gets cold. Right. With that carbon, it doesn't change degrees. I mean, it's not cold. And, and the, the lightness and the more comfortable it is to shoot, it's phenomenal. And I, I keep saying, uh, how can it get better? And the engineers tell me, wait till you see next year's. And that's scary. Right. It does. Absolutely. You never know what's coming from PSC. That's right. Well, the only thing you do know, it's going to get good. Right. It's going to be exactly. better every single year. So, with that being said, you've shot the African Big Five. Most memorable African hunt. Well, I shot the lion, uh, and you can watch it on YouTube, PSE on YouTube. And uh, You know, you, I train for this, and I, and I study the, the critter that I'm going to hunt because I have a lot of respect for animals. It's not just going out and, and uh, you know, harvesting the animal. You know, I, I've got a lot of respect for these animals, and... And the deal is, is that I study them. I study, you know, their habitat, what I got to do, spot and stalk, tree stand, whatever it takes. Well, on this line, I trained 40 yards, 40, 45, 50 yard shots. Well, it just so happened that this line made a fresh kill. Uh, I got too close. I got 32 yards. Uh, when I pulled the shot off on this line, uh, I center punched him. I shot his heart and lungs completely out, but I was too close. This line was all on video. Uh, it made it to me in 2.2 seconds. And if you didn't have a professional hunter uh, with you like I did have, the cameraman and myself, uh, we wouldn't be here talking about it. So uh, he died less than six feet from me at full charge and with his heart and lungs completely shot out. I saw that video, and it had me shaking in my boots. I can't, I can't imagine what you were feeling at that moment when you look down six feet and, and he's laying at your feet. Now, does that match anything, feel of that feeling of adrenaline and everything? Does that match anything in your career from law enforcement and doing anything like that to that point? Well, it's sort of like law enforcement. I mean, when you were a cop for 30 years and you, you track down guys with felony records and felony charges and that's all you mess with, uh, you don't know what's going on behind that door that you're fixing to kick in and, and to try to arrest this perfect. But on the lion deal, you think everything's going to go smooth and you, know, you make a good shot, what you train for. But then the unexpected, and this thing comes running at you. You don't have time to think. After it's all over with, the cat's laying there, and they're interviewing, and the camera's rolling on my face. You can tell that, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and you might have to shake your pants a little bit, you know, to make sure everything clears. But I'm telling you, it was an amazing feat. And then, of course, then we, you know, we did, uh, we darted the rhino. And the elephant was, was a tremendous hunt. Uh, and, and it's just... I mean, I've been very blessed. You know, the leopard and uh, the Cape Buffalo. Everybody, you know, the Cape Buffalo was probably the easiest one that I shot, and uh, so it's been a, it's been a tremendous career. You know, uh, of being able to to just put your hands on these animals and critters. Which, you know, there's 170 animals in my house right now, so I can remember all of these hunts. Is there an animal out there that you want to go after that you haven't yet? Oh yeah, 
<laughs> I'm fixing to go after one here March 3rd. I'm fixing to uh, hunt the tar over in New Zealand, uh, and that's been on my quest, and I hope I end that pretty quick. And then uh, I've got a brown bear uh, going on uh, here in June or July. And, uh, and then, you know, it doesn't matter. I've killed 18 grand slams of turkeys, two world slams of turkeys. Turkey hunt's a passion to me, which I love to do. Uh, I, you know, I think that's the, the ultimate challenge with a bow and arrow set. But, you know, I kill this brown bear in the tar. Um, you know, that's a quest, my personal quest that, uh, that I'm trying to end. You know, and he talks about the turkeys, and you still hear the passion. It's not about the kill. It's, it's the thrill of the chase and getting out there and still getting after it, even though you've done it so much. That's awesome. You know, calling these turkeys in, you know, I, 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 uh, I've been taught by, you know, one of the world's best, Dick Kirby. You know, he's passed away now, and I've been with the Quaker Boy Game College for 42 years. So he's one that taught me how to call, and, and I've killed a lot of grand slams with Dick. And, and to trick in that bird uh, is an amazing feat, you know, just to – you don't have to be a world champion caller to do it. I couldn't call with anything. Wing, bone, mouth, diaphragm, slay, it doesn't matter. But the, what amazes me the most is I love taking kids. I take kids with a Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, I've taken kids with uh, uh, no operable legs, uh, brain tumors. And you think you have a hard day like being a job as a cop. And then I, I never forget, I took this little kid. His, his name's Austin Miller, a tremendous kid. He had no use for his legs. I killed him that turkey, and, and uh, he comes around, and hugs my neck, and says, "This is the greatest day of my life." And and you don't think that chokes you up? You think you had a rough day? You go need to go in the mirror, smack yourself upside the head, and say, "Right there's your <laughs> rough day." That's what gets me going and calling these turkeys in. That, that's that's a big thing for me. Amen to that, man. That's ab- ab- giving back absolutely. to kids, uh, especially those that are less fortunate than us. And you you, you know, it, it's, it's just it's it's a. It's a sober reminder of reality for you, right? Yes. You know, and then, okay, so now, out of all the animals that you, you, you've gotten, what's your favorite one to eat? Well, you know, out of, it, out of the ones it, that you've eaten. It's which, hard. And, I, and, and be honest with everybody asks me, I, I've ate it all. I mean, everything I've shot, I have ate. I've got a 12, 12 and a half foot, you know, alligator, uh, life size mount. I've ate the gator. Uh, I've shot rattlesnakes. I've ate them. Turkey breast is hard to beat for me. When you put that turkey, going back to the turkey when, breast, when take, all right. When you take that turkey breast and fillet it, put it on that grill, it's pretty hard to beat. <laughs> all right, so you know that, that. There you go. Come right back to the turkey. Well, then I got to ask, lion and elephant. What does it taste like? You know, the lion is a, is a white meat. It tastes like mountain lion, uh, in which I've harvested one of them, but. It's a white meat. It tastes like sort of like pork to me. The elephant was a little tough. Of course, it's a big bull. And, and everybody said, how can you shoot an elephant? Believe me. Believe this. When you go to Africa, and I've been there 12 times, nothing goes to waste. Nothing. You know, I shot this elephant. Within three hours, there wasn't one ounce of meat left on any of the ribs. I fed two villages for two months that hadn't had any meat. So, Nothing goes to waste. And to watch these, watch these tribes come in and disperse of that meat was unbelievable. And then they use every part as well, correct? Every part. The skin. I wasn't allowed to bring any of the skin, the tusk. They gave me the tail. I brought the tail back. They, they dipped the tail uh, in gold and, make, and made uh, the wife and myself uh, bracelets, which was a, a big honor to me. But uh, it, it was an amazing deal. So nothing goes to waste in Africa. And believe me, there's a lot of critters over there. Well, and, and these hunts that you talk about over there in Africa, this is all well-maintained and managed areas where your tag fees, all, all those fees, it all goes back into the management of the game. we got all these people out here that think that it's evil, it's bad. It, it, nothing can be further from the truth. They have no clue. You go to Africa, that is what makes this country thrive is the hunters going in. And uh, you know, I was very fortunate enough to, uh, uh, to have dinner with uh, President Trump's son, uh, Eric. And uh, uh, he is a big hunter. And we talked about this. And until you made a trip to Africa and seen how many critters there is and the money that the people that come in and hunt to provide, to protect the elephants, to protect the rhinos, to protect all these critters, and the habitat to make it better, then they shouldn't criticize anything because I'm telling you, Africa is flourishing with wildlife, 
and they really take care of them. They don't mess with poachers. Like every, everybody over here, uh, they don't like poachers. Anybody doesn't like poachers or trespassers. Here's the deal over there. You poach over there, you're not going anywhere. They'll kill you. Yep, they, exactly. They, they will kill you and leave you last. We had, a, we had a bodyguard over there. His name was Bravey. He's from Zimbabwe. Now all he did was patrol the area. I said, Bravey, what happens if you uh, spot a poacher? He said, I kill him. I said, well, what do you do with him? He says, I don't do nothing with him. I leave him lay. Africa's full of predators. He won't last long. Right. That's amazing to do. So he's feeding the animals. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. Right. Uh, I mean, I, it's the death of a human. I shouldn't laugh like that. But the point is, is they're taking life. And they're doing it illegally, so they deal with it in a very unique way. <laughs> right. And, exactly. and even those, that, that type of meat doesn't go to waste. And that's very important, you know. That's very important for people to realize uh, that they patrol these areas and protect the money that we spend over there uh, on all the fees. It's the money goes back into the wildlife to protect this wildlife and to make sure that uh, the poaching doesn't go on and the trespassers and they got a, a patrol that do nothing but go out and look for snares and, and to protect the wildlife you know that we're there to hunt so you know you these people got a misconception if they go over and see at what time you go over and see for yourself what they do it's amazing it's yep. amazing to see the wildlife in africa south africa and all the countries over there well let's take take a step back just a little bit here we've talked about all this hunting here in, in your career in, uh, in your regular job in law enforcement. But let's go back. Where, where did you get the passion for hunting? Where, who gave you that and instilled that, and what did you first start hunting? Well, you know, when I, I was a kid, I was a big athlete. I mean, I was. Uh, I'm very fortunate. Uh, uh, when I grew up, uh, you know, my, my dad didn't hunt. My uncle hunted. He got me into it because I was in sports. And, um, in fact, I just got inducted to the Sports Hall of Fame, you know, where I'm from. And, and I, and I did it all, baseball, basketball, football, track, the whole deal. And then when I got out of school, um, I got in a car accident, which it ruined my baseball career. So I, I started shooting a bow and arrow set, and then, like I say, being at the right place at the right time, uh, this guy said, look, you're a tremendous shooter. He said, I want to, you continue it. And I started shooting tournaments, and lo and behold, uh, I met an outdoor writer, and he said, I'd like for you to shoot an antelope on film with me in South Dakota. And uh, that started the whole thing. I started shooting. I shot an antelope, and then antelope led to a bear. And lo and behold, I got a chance to go hunt elk. And lo and behold, you know, like, you know, 150 animals later in my house, I'm still going. <laughs> that's okay. quite a beginning. It, that's a, okay, that's a, that's a beginning for him. So now you have got one piece of advice to give to a new archer. What are you going to tell him? Well, it's even in law enforcement in my career when I do speech, and I do seminars all over the United States. You know, the, the thing is, and I told you earlier, is to keep your nose clean, is to hang with the right people. You know, hang with the right people. If you want to get it in any career you want, I made a hunting career and a law enforcement career. You know, if you hang with the right people, because once you get that bad name, you know, it's hard to break in the industry. And everybody thinks this hunting industry is a big industry. Believe me, it's not a big industry. I mean, it's not. This show is huge. And I know everybody in this show. But the deal is, if you want to get started, helping people out, keeping your nose clean, keeping a clean record, do not do anything stupid, anything that totally relates to stupid. Hang with the right crowd. you got a chance of doing what you want to do because this country is giving the opportunity to do it. Amen. You know, and, and that goes to the people who protect this country. Absolutely. You know, our law enforcement and our men and women overseas that are fighting. So yep. give them a Absolutely. shout out as well. Well, Bill, uh, we've taken 10, 15 minutes of your time here. I really appreciate you uh, taking time to sit down here in the trailer with us and hanging out. It's, it's been a very educational 10 or 15 minutes for me. Thanks for joining us. Well, look, it's, it's been a pleasure for me. And, you know, for guys like you out there spreading the word and, and, and doing stuff like this, you know, it's amazing. It helps our sport, and we definitely appreciate it. So thanks for having me. Well, what do you think, man? I tell you what. The guy... Okay, I really want to see his house. Right? All the animals? All the animals. <laughs> and how much room he's got left. Right. Because poor Denny Steiner had to build a, a bigger uh, barn. Barn, practically, yeah, right? right? And this guy, from what Dan was telling us, he ain't got much room left. No, he's going to have to get another house or something. But... Right. But, man, you talk about experience and, and what he's been through and seen and gone after. and Gone after and been through that, that lion hunt in Africa with a boat. To me, that 
wow. I just, that alone right there to me just gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. I've seen the video from it. Yeah, that, you know. It's incredible. Hope, but, hope uh, your uh, PA has got a good shot. <laughs> yeah, right on. Yeah, absolutely. So, definitely a great guy. Great well, guy to talk with. We got 15 minutes with him, and it was well worth it. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, take our first break, and we come back. Let's get into something that's going to get us into this coming season, which is turkey season. Absolutely. All right. We're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at pseartery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, everybody, to Up North Journal, second segment of the show here on the live stream and the regular podcast as well. Absolutely. You know, it, it's... I kind of got lost there for a minute. You, I'm, you, I'm discombobulated. You kinda, yeah, you kind of <laughs> lost yourself there, but you, you, you recovered nicely. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, just, just uh, a good recovery is always a good plan to have, yeah. especially when you're out in the woods and, you know, it's, it's always good to have a, a recovery plan, but it's also good to practice yeah. in case you need that recovery plan. Well, man, you, you got the table full here tonight, man. I do. That's, you, know, uh, I, you know, this warm weather, matter of fact, my cousin, my brother texted me earlier this week. Yeah. And said that he saw a flock of turkeys out in the field down where we used to live. Okay. And there was a couple uh, strutting. Okay. So I was like, ooh, okay. You know what that means. It's getting close. It's getting close. Closer. And and, uh, here we are. This is the last weekend in February. Mm -hmm. And the second and fourth weekends, you and I are going to be at Cabela's. Yes. Doing turkey. Doing turkeys. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And so we figured, I was kind of figured, you know, you know what? Maybe a good time. Let's just go get the calls out. You know, maybe maybe uh, look at them, check them out, uh, get the slick stick out, do some conditioning, condition them. Uh, we got a little test we're gonna run tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I so. see something else that you got here. Let me get back over here to the the wide shot here so we can see what's going on. You've got something oh, right there that right you just here. got back. And that that to me does not look like a striker for a pot call. No. Okay. So during uh, I, I did this last year and then I I did it again this year um, at a wild game dinner. Uh, there was they had a silent auction. Okay. And so what I did is I bid it on uh, magna porting of a shotgun barrel. Okay. So I won it. And so this is the barrel I did this year. This is the my twenty gauge Mossberg turkey gun that I'm using. Okay. Uh, that uh i don't know if you can see this you know what let me go back to that tight shot and yeah. i'll let you stand up there and, and yeah. uh, put it in front of the you can see right here you can see right here there's two rows you're gonna have to talk louder dude all right <laughs> here you know what here, here. Give, give me that here you give me here. that all right i'll go over here i'll put it in front of the camera uh, there we go all right so what i'll do so what we did is, is i won that and um what they did is they put <laughs> they put two rows there you go two rows of EDM holes on each side of the barrel, so you get four total rows. Uh, there's 11 slots on each side, and it's magnaported. And those holes are pointed backwards of the barrel. So I thought that when I looked at that. Yep, they looked like they were backwards. It sure looked like yes. it to me. And what that does is, is it takes the gases and it pushes it back to reduce the recoil and the kick of you know the the lift of the front barrel. You know, if if you go over to uh, our Facebook page about a week back. Yes. Uh, we did it on the trail with Tom Wright from Williams Gun Sight and Outfitters here locally, yep. the gun shop that, that I do some work with at Channel 12. And we did a story on, on uh, muzzle brakes. Yep. So the science behind he kind of explained a little bit of that, and they showed how that all works. But that it's the exact same thing. Exactly. And uh, it's an EDM process. Uh, they do it... Uh, 
two two lines for the shotgun barrel on each side of, mm-hmm. of, of center. And then hopefully in the next week or two, I'm going to get this thing out, go shoot it, and uh, see how my barrel's changed. Okay. Actually, this 20 gauge, uh, last year that we shot it, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. So You're hoping uh, <laughs> that everything's okay? <laughs> well, that and, well, it's going to be a little bit louder. Yeah, but I, sure. That's another thing I want to check into. Uh, actually, also, um, Lincoln Roan brought this up mm-hmm. when we talked about that, right? Yeah, when I made that <clears throat> post. Yep. Uh, the earring protection. Uh, I think I want to maybe look into getting one of those those game ears. Okay, I know Bob Rich from the uh, BR Shooting Journal. He's got the Squirrel Hunter uh, blog over yes, on Facebook. Yep. He uses uh, pro ears, and he said he simply loves them. Pro ears, yep, okay, and that's what he hunts with. So, and he's uh, he's got some uh, hearing issues as as I do. I don't know. I, I don't think we've talked this on the show, but I've got some hearing issues. We talked about yeah, the roughly ringing. last year. Yeah, the ringing in the ear. Yeah. Uh, so I had that done. I just got this back Friday. So I haven't even been able to put this on the gun yet, so I'm kind of excited. You have to get out to the range. Absolutely. So got the turkey choke. It's all ready to go. Okay. Now, typically, I, I know you won that at auction, but typically, what does that cost somebody? Typically, uh, just the shotgun, simple shotgun here, mm-hmm. uh, retail value is 125 Okay. 125 bucks. Yep. So I think it's well worth it. I really am interested to see how it works on the the. 20 or 12 gauge that i had done last year you haven't shot it i haven't shot that one since i had it put on i was using this gun last year last year okay so, i got you but uh we'll get those out we're gonna shoot them and uh, see how it is i'm oh, excited okay good deal yeah so you know it, it's it, it, we're getting into the spring thing uh, my brother texts me says he's seeing some out there strutting and flocks and here uh there was a uh, kevin craven posted uh he uh-huh. saw a big flock out in the field we got to get... Uh, I haven't seen them. mine yet. The ones behind the house that I'm not allowed to hunt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've Yeah, that's a whole other story. But, uh, yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't been able to uh, see them yet this year. Um, Jeffrey Leantis. Uh, hey, Jeff, what's going on? He posts, uh, Williams and Flint did his 243. Uh, the great jo- did a great job, but they're loud. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So you know, it, 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 it's kind of playing out that uh, you have this, the muzzle break, or you have the um, Magnaport done, you're going to have to be aware of your sound right well the gun that they did in the video if you do go watch it was a uh i believe it was a 300 weatherby and it was a it was a screw on muzzle brake okay yep so they shot it without it we, we shot the video and everything just to show the difference and slow mode it down and everything but you know i had my hearing protection on we're indoors in an indoor four lane shooting range and i mean i knew it was going to be loud but oh man i i jumped but when they put the muzzle brake on it was yeah, it was even louder. Right, you know that's coming back at you, and right, you could feel it. You know, use the concussion. Yep, exactly. So man, that's just that's something. But uh, but no. excited to get that get that ready to get rolling. Get this definitely. You got to shoot the turkey guns. Make sure we were patterning. Yep. I picked up some shells yesterday for the twenty gauge, um, three inch number fives. Okay. Um, I'm looking for my twelve gauge. They didn't have them. I probably got to go over to another. I went to a couple spots yesterday, but okay. I need the two and three quarter shell. Now, do you expect it to pattern differently? I don't, I don't think I don't, so. I don't know because I've never shot. I don't one think of the so. Break on it. I think it's just gonna be. It's gonna be the same. I think. Yeah. It's just I'm just making sure that my scope isn't gone anywhere. Right. Okay. It should be on. I'm. I'm, I'm oh, expecting you, your it to twelve be on. is scoped. Yeah, they're both scoped. So. Oh, you've got a scope that goes on this. Yeah. It's setting it back on the receiver portion. Yep. Of it. It's a. Uh, I want to say dovetail mount. Okay. So right on. But uh, yeah, they they both got scopes. Uh, this one, matter of fact, has a true glow turkey scope, and the other one is just a simple red dot. Gotcha. So, okay. I'm excited to get those out, get those shot, check the patterns. Plus, just to get outdoors. This rain being inside and everything. I wanted to get out this weekend. And didn't make it. Right. I tore the cabin apart. You did a fantastic job putting it back together. That too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I went from one. I went from that wall to that wall, from that wall to that wall. I was looking for something. Still didn't find still it. Can't find it. No. You know what, dude? I think because it's black, right? Mm-hmm. It's got to be here. It just. And I don't think you've taken it anywhere. I, I tore this place completely apart. I looked in every nook and cranny and every box that's in here. So amazing. I don't know. Anyway, so I tell you what, uh, we're bumping up here on our second break. Why don't we step outside? We take our break. We come back. We've got about a half hour left in the show here. Um, we can continue to live stream afterwards, but uh, for the podcast portion here, let's let's get some business done, take a break, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. 
Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, third segment of the show. You know, um, okay, we talked about the uh, the barrel here, Dan. Uh, we've made quite the display here uh, in front here. Well, let's get another close up here and show everybody what we got going on tonight. Yep. Uh, just to cover a question from Tim, uh, what distance do I shoot the gun into pattern at? I do believe they have it set up for twenty five yards. Okay, that's where you shoot at. You at, shoot at, at Williams. Williams. Okay, at Williams. I think it's twenty five or thirty. Okay. I want to say it's 25. I can't remember if it's 25 or 30. It's one or the other. Yeah, it's it's right there. When I see Tom this week, I'll ask him. Yeah, there you go. But I will say this. The whole entire gun range is underwater. I was over there Thursday shooting really? shooting this week's episode. And, dude, it is, it is like feet underwater all the way to the 100-yard berm. It's, really? He says it's the worst it's ever been. So Okay. So, all right. Maybe back to I what we're maybe, talking about maybe here. Maybe I won't be going this week. What do we, what do we got up here? All right. So... Courtesy of our sponsor for Up North Journal this year, uh, courtesy of Lim Walker's Game Calls out of Hearts, West Virginia, Tim Seas, maker of these fine calls. Uh, I, as you see there, we've got uh, the green one on the end is the plastic double-sided. Um, that one has a glass over slate. You can flip that right there. Look at that. That's, that's your glass over slate. Uh, the one next to that is the glass, and the one next to that is a slate. The two on top, uh, we just got in. And those two are aluminum. They're almost identical. Okay. Um, should I flip them over? Yeah, flip them over. And uh, Tim sent this up to us, and he's kind of asking us to check these out and give them a little workout and kind of give us a, his opinion of them. Uh, he did something a little bit different here on the, the back side of these. Um, as you can see here, the hole in the center and the hole in the center of the other one are two different sizes. So will that make a noise difference? Will one be louder, one be quieter? I don't know. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? There's only one way to find out. All right. We have played with these just a little bit. Just uh, Absolutely. Just to uh, so, be clear. Um, as we talk about these, and you're going to play the first one. These are aluminum. These are anodized aluminum calls. And all we've done to these, uh, I talked to them today, matter of fact, about conditioning them. Where's my scotch bright? Right here. Um, we just took a little bit of scotch bright, and we just kind of, there you go, just went around in a circle. Don't have to do much to them. Uh, they'll get a little bit as you wear them, wear them down, but just keep them connected. That's all you got to do. Okay. Nothing real special. And you also did your striker, which is a good thing in case some oils or, mm-hmm. or whatever got on there. So play the first one and let's see how this sounds. Okay. I'm not going to say which ones are yeah, which. Don't tell, don't, does, I want you guys to listen to number one, and number two. I'm going to, I'm going to play it from the same spot here. You know, let me, let me put it up here just a little bit. So that way everybody can. See where I'm playing from. Make sure that they understand that we are switching. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's number one. And this is number two. Okay. Any any difference? Did you notice any difference? I noticed a slight difference. Number one or number two? Number one seemed to have been louder. A little louder? Is that the bigger or the smaller hole? It's bigger. It looks like what we talked about. Yeah. Uh, now, the striker you're using, uh, which is one of your typical strikers that you're using. This uh, is one of my go-tos. Um, this one is a Primos. It's a laminate striker. Um, I mean, you can you, see I've you, got... There's a, a 20, ton of strikers you can use. 20 different uh, ones here. Right. And so it's just one that he picked. Uh, this one... Which, this one came with... Uh, with the call. With the limb walker calls. Right. That's still number two, okay? This is number one. 
One is sounding louder. The first one? Yep. That was number two, actually. The 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 first one. That was still number two in my hand, the small one. I think yeah. the bigger indication is what striker you're using. Yep, I was just about to say, because you used this striker. Yep. And then you just went to that striker, mm -hmm. and it sounded different. They did sound, and they should sound different. Absolutely, because of the different, different types of wood. Yep. But between the two, um, that was number two. This is number one. Okay, let's let's go back. Number one again. And this one's number two. And I'm playing basically in the same spot. That one sounds quieter, a tad. Really. I think so. Okay. Or maybe not twitter, maybe deeper. Deeper? Okay. Maybe deeper, that's the word. It's number two. Back to number one. Let's see the spot where I played here. Seems a little sharper. Yeah, a little yeah. deeper. I think you're getting... Uh, so I think the holes are making a difference, but it, it goes to show you also that strikers make a difference because you could also use this acrylic. That one's not been... Right. shaped yet um, right we got to work on this because uh tim sent it to us flat he said that uh this striker this this acrylic striker will play on a slate call when it's wet yes i need to get some water in here yeah you do and <laughs> we try it out right. but but it's it's cut flat i've not really i've not shaped it yet so uh the reason he does that is because he said he likes everybody likes to you know kind of play things the way they want it's it's like tuning your own guitar you want right. to tune your strikers the way you know what that playing. is that's a very good <laughs> And I forget which ones we're playing now, number wise. But you got to hold it just right because I don't have it shaped yet. That's not a fair representation. So there you go. So, uh, as far as the aluminum one conditioning it, it's real simple to condition. Uh, so, it'd be good to get these calls out there. What are you looking for? I'm looking for my other laminated striker that's. Oh, you're trying to steal it on me. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you're trying to steal my go-to strikers, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to run with them. You just notice high pitch. And that's the thing with the metal calls, the aluminum, copper, or whatever. It's to get that high pitch on a windy day. Right. Jeffrey Leantis, ever listen to an actual live wild turkey? You just have to be close. Y'all, you know, it's good to be close. But on a windy day, and you got to throw a call. Right. That's but and really that's the it's only way also you... good to be close and practice because there's nothing worse than having them hang up at about sixty yards. Right, right. Because maybe you're not you're not you're just not that love pitch that he's looking for. Well, you know, that's the thing. I've had I mean, I've got tons of calls and I don't typically use box calls. I'll use a mouth call up close so I'm hands free at that point. But uh, you know, when I'm running and gunning, I might call with one call and not get a response and i may take and, and change a striker and get a response or i may change a call and get a response it just depends on on you know the way things are made and and the material they're made out of and the way you play them you know right exactly you know versatility so yeah we've got four calls that we're going to be running with this year here so and if in any in the, in of these calls by limb walker you just go over on facebook you, you go over you go over to Facebook. You look up Lim Walker game calls. Uh, he's got them all listed there. He's got them all priced out uh, with delivery. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Jacob Abrams just typed in, chimed in. He says, "Thanks, guys. Now you got me interested in turkey hunting." Well, that's the whole purpose. We're here. <laughs> that's why we're here. That's why we're here, Bobby. right? <laughs> but so, Jacob Abrams, you're interested in turkey hunting. Get on Facebook. Go over to Lim Walker game calls. Yep. Check them out. He's got the prices. Um, the double sided plastic one. That's a great that's, turkey call. That's the, the best deal. What that one cost? That one is uh, thirty five, I think, or thirty plus five dollars shipping. Okay, so you got you got a uh, a glass side, and then you got the slate side. And there you go. Okay, so while so we so while we got universal. that one on there, it's universal. Um, Let me ask. Um, yep. So. We got the two. We got the. So now, how are you? What am I doing? What are you doing? I am conditioning the call. And what I'm doing is I'm roughing the surface up. We're going to give Jacob a little schooling here, you know, seeing as how he's the guy that hasn't been turkey hunting. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm roughing this, this surface up and I'm going 
I'm using my my Primo uh, slick stick here, and there is a rough side to the back here, and I'm using that, and I'm going straight across the call. I'm not making circles. I'm going straight in a straight line back and forth. And you really typically, you, you don't have to, on the glass side, you don't have to make the, the rough all over. You can make it just in a little area. You just want it rough enough for it to vibrate across. That's right. All you're doing is playing across the, the vibration, the, the roughness. Right. That's what's making the call. You see, that, that striker plays deeper. Yep. And you know what, Jacob? If, if there's one thing, if you've never been turkey hunting, what will get you hooked is if you do that call and you get a response back and you start talking with a turkey, you're hooked. I love that. Isn't it? That's good. That's, that's good, good, man. And that's the double-sided plastic. Yep. Uh, you go up on Lim Walkers on Facebook. He's got the prices for all these. Uh, the double-sided glass over slate, it says 30 plus $5 shipping. Just get a hold of to Tim, and he'll get them to you ASAP. That's right. Now, the next one that's a double-sided is a single-sided glass. Uh, the next one we got here. And this all this is is just the one-sided, uh, again, going with the glass. Just kind of conditioning a little bit. I'm trying to make the purr. I don't have the area scratched up big enough to... There you go. And that's the that's a glass. I need to practice. I haven't played these in a year. No, you haven't. Okay, so, and uh, the slate. And then you got the slate. I like slates mainly. They play softer. And like Jeff was saying uh, when he chimed in earlier about playing close to them, you don't want to be throwing a bunch of loud calls out to them. These, the, the slate will play a lot quieter, a lot, lot softer. Problem is, on a morning that's got a lot of moisture in the air. Don't get it wet. They get wet. Well, we got the acrylic striker this year. Right, so, we got the acrylic striker that Tim says will play the slate when wet. When wet. So that's something that we want to check out. And, right. Uh, Definitely remember. Gotta remember that. And now how do you condition the slate? The slate, you use scotch bright, piece of scotch bright. You carry this with you in the woods. Because also, you'll, you'll clean the end of your, your striker. Just take and just rub it around on the end like so. Because it'll load up as well. But you just take scotch bright and you just go around in a circle. Like what we did with the aluminums. And, uh, and then rough that surface up. And then you're just making the, the call on top here. There you go. And that's a slate call. That's a slate. So you've got glass, you've got slate, we've got aluminum. There's all different types of coverings that you can use in a pot call. Yep, absolutely. You know, But that's not the only calls that they have out there. Uh, you, all, you also got on the table uh, two box calls. Yep. That uh, box calls are... I'll tell you what, why don't we save them? Let's go to a break. We'll come all back right. and we'll talk about this. We can do okay? that. All righty. We're going to step outside and we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Killer Food Plots have been helping property owners for over 20 years create premier whitetail habitat. Whether replenishing your soil with their all-natural organic fusion pellets or planting a premier KFP food plot seed blend to help your deer rebuild their bodies through spring and summer while supplying the much-needed high energy during and after the rut, you can trust that Killer Food Plots family and their products will help your deer achieve their full potential. Welcome back, last time on the show, everybody. We're talking turkey, though. Talking turkey. Okay, what I got here is chalk. This is this is not your standard chalk. Uh, you got to make sure you 
you don't get chalk that has oil in it. That's very important. And then we you use can't, these on... You can't use your Crayola crayon <laughs> chalk. <laughs> chalk, right. What we're doing is we're roughing up the, or not roughing, we're, we're applying this to the okay. back of the paddle. And one thing, and we're not sponsored by Primo, but we're going to give them up. This slick stick is just awesome. It's invaluable. Comes with a piece of chalk, comes with two pieces of Scotch Brite. It comes with the rough and the semi rough, I guess if you want to call it. But right there, carry that in your pocket. You can condition your calls while you're out in the field. Well, here, real quick, what I like about that, like you said, it's got the rough and it's got the stone on the side. But right here in the end, if you, it's hard to see, but there's a piece of Scotch Brite in there. So when you're out playing this and you want to clean your peg, you just run it into the inside like so. Cleans the end of your peg out. You can pull this Scotch Brite out, and you've then got a piece that you can actually clean your uh, pot call with. And there's also one in the end here. And the reason that's in there is because it is holding a piece of chalk, which you just dropped. Just dropped. Probably into a puddle in the woods. So you can see there's a piece of chalk. Yep. So, But for 10 bucks, you got everything there to condition any one of these calls. Yep. Whether it be a box call, whether it be a pot call. And your peg. And your peg. Right. So, so with that being said, uh, two box calls. There you go. You just kind of just drag it across, right? This is uh, an old Lynch, not real old, otherwise I wouldn't have it out. <laughs> right, as a Primos here. Yeah, this is an all wood call. That's a composite box on that one. That's that's the first one I ever bought. Oh, okay. And ran in the woods with. Just didn't know what I was doing. Well, bought, you know, you know whatever. It's kind of fun. funny you bought it, that. But this one actually is plastic. Yeah, it's composite on, on three, three sides. sides. And on the side that it plays... Yep. Is the wood side right? And really, truthfully, if if that broke, you could almost fix that because it's got the, the screws. Yeah, kind of neat. I don't know if you could buy replacement parts for that or not. Pro- I don't know. The thing I don't like about these box calls is when you're running through the woods, Especially if you put it in your vest pocket. It, it, it chirps. And makes Unless you get a rubber band and, and, and get that. Yep. But if you leave it go, you'll be walking. And if you're on if you're hunting public land. Oh, yeah. That's you know, it. Then you got you got to worry about somebody hearing that and Shoot. thinking you're a turkey. Yeah. So. And trust me, they will. <laughs> right. They will. Uh, so we've got the box call. There's one more call that we're, we're at here. Uh the mouth calls. Your mouth calls. Um, These have not been cleaned this year or gotten ready, so I'm not even going to put them in my mouth. Right, because what you should do, if you're using the ones from last year, if they've been sitting for a while, uh, take them, dump them in some mouthwash for a few minutes, let them get uh, decontaminated. Let them get decontaminated, let them right. get lubricated again, let them get some moisture in them. Um, and, and, I, I found one, actually, that the the, the whole uh, reed in it fell apart. It was oh. so dry. Yeah, so. Uh, Tim, hint, uh, besides the rubber band, is the paper towel as well. Paper towel, okay. Yep, that's a good one. There you go. Uh, but as far as mouth calls, mouth calls are really cool in the fact that uh, first thing you got to determine is what kind of mouth you have. Yep. Me, uh, I, I found out that uh, the small framed mouth calls is what's for me. Uh, tried the large, which I didn't know was difference, and I gagged, of course. But you learn to trim them down. Either trim them down or you buy the small frame ones. And because I have a 50 minute drive to work and drive from home, I can practice on the way home all the way and bother nobody except me. Without annoying your wife. Right. Like, see, okay, I'm going to I'm going to line these up here on one side. You can see that 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 one in the front is is actually narrower than the one in the back. Uh, If you can see it fair, I, I can't tell if you can or not. Uh, Jeff Leanta says, keep them in the fridge also. I have heard that. Yep. Yeah, there's an, a guy that we used to hunt with that, that did that as well. That's one thing. Actually, I just found these. these. These were put away with a bunch of stuff when I was cleaning the office. And I thought I had lost my mouth calls and didn't even have them last year. So, Oh, so um, you found them. Yeah, actually, I, I went out and bought one of the bat wings from uh, yeah, Cabela's. Yeah, you bought from Cabela's when we were there last year. Yeah, and that's the one I ran with last year, but... Um, you know, truthfully, I don't even know if these, these will even play. I don't know if they will. He be... says the mouth calls will last forever. Do they? He says so, but, uh, mine, um, I noticed started to wear through. Okay. Well, that one was so dry. Like I said, it just, it crumbled, but, uh, that was probably one of the first ones I, I had ever bought. But, uh, I don't know. I've got probably five to you, 10 of these things. Here. You've got a container there that holds all your mouth calls. Mm-hmm. And here's another one, uh, again, by Primos. Mm-hmm. Kind of a cool thing here. 
Uh, you open this up. It's magnetic. You can strap it to your leg. Leg, so arm, you whatever. Your leg. You open it up, and it's got room for eight eight different uh, mouth calls. And there's your bat wing, by the way. Um, so that's a great thing. Great little tool to have. You won't lose your mouth calls. It's kind of cool. Kevin, you like that shirt? <laughs> yeah, me too. Absolutely. But uh, there's all your calls. Uh, you got to start practicing them. Like I said, mouth calls, you can practice to and from on your way to work. Just get them in your mouth. It, the first thing you got to do is get it in there. And if you just drive to work and just have it in your mouth when you start, if you've never done it before, just to get that feeling in your mouth. Right. Just to practice to keep them from gagging. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that one's loud. That is loud. That's your locator calls. That is my, that's an owl hoot. I've got three or four different ones. You got a, you got a few of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where they all came from. To tell you the truth, some of them may be Mikey's oh, okay. from back in the day. This is one that I use in in the field uh, along with my crow call. That's a little different. This is a peleated woodpecker call. Oh yes, okay. This this is pretty high pitched. <coughs> but that's uh, peleated. Or, I'm sorry, not peleated. It's a peacock. Oh, a peacock. Peacock, and we got peacocks around the corner here. Do you really? Yep. <laughs> But it's another thing you can throw out there to try to get them to shot gobble. Kevin says I can practice at work. Yeah. Coworker of yours? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure that would go over. I think what you need to do is you and your coworker need to get, get maybe somebody get uh, one of those rattle gobble calls, and then the other one have uh, a pot call or a mouth call, hen, and, and kind of go back and forth across the room with each other. Right. And then you right. can kind of get down and you can, you can start doing the strut. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I'll be checked into the loony bin. Though. Right, right. They put you in a round room until you sit in the corner. Right. So, but uh, yeah, we we found, I was, actually, I found most of these this weekend cleaning stuff out, getting ready uh, for the show coming up in you March. You found a whole box of stuff. What are you talking about? Yeah, this box is full of uh, pot calls and duck calls and predator calls and coyote. Boxo calls. Yeah, so. Jeffrey Leantes. I have a couple custom turtle shell slate calls. I have heard of those. He, those can, he are can share awesome. some pics of them. Please do. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see them. And actually, um, if you know somebody that makes those and they're fairly reasonably priced, let me know because I love to collect pot calls. You're going to have to get a tur- turtle shell. Well, maybe the person that sells them has, okay. has some. Maybe he's got a, Maybe he because here's the thing: okay. we can't. You can't hunt turtles here in Michigan. You so know? if I find a dead turtle on the road that hasn't been squashed, I don't know. You have to talk. Somebody can make them. Mm. But, but that's the thing is, you know, no, you can't hunt turtles. You here. can't hunt turtles. No, just like you can't hunt frogs or gig frogs. You can. You can't gig frogs here in Michigan. They're protected. So that is what it is. It is. So there's your whole gamut of turkey hunting calls. Absolutely. So. It's that time of year. Start practicing. Annoy the neighbors. Annoy the wife. Annoy, annoy your the dog. Dog. Your I was coworkers. doing. I was doing the aluminum today. Actually, I was doing them all. Uh, yeah, the the puppy wasn't liking it. He just had his head cocked at me, looking at me in my office, barking at me. Okay, so no. Okay, we talked about all the calls. What What's your favorite call? Favorite type of call to use, and why? Okay, so I do like the pot call. I like the slate over glass. That, that seems to be uh, one that I use a lot. It's a slate over glass. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, but in the last couple of years, I've taken up the mouth call, mm-hmm. and the mouth call is getting really quick to be my go-to guy because you said it before. Um, the less motion, mm-hmm. it's just in your mouth, and then it's just uh, you can hold everything else still mm-hmm. and, and and work it right. Right. And then if you practice enough, you can take the mouth call and. and push it out and i wear a mask so i can push it out and let it sit in the side of my mask yeah. in my mouth all the time but right now uh my number one go-to is a, is a pot call okay yeah that's yeah. that's my favorite by far i love slate um slate or slate over glass is is my my favorite to use uh slate nine times out of ten uh, unless it's windy you know i'll go to the, the glass and now we've got the aluminum if you've got a windy day and you're trying to throw a call f- for a long distance because you, you're not getting any reaction <laughs> right and you, you need to get loud um, yeah, that, those would play in, into that, but I love, I love the softness of the slate, I, uh, of the, the quietness and I can control it. I can purr really easy. Especially on, on those on mornings when there is absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. Dead quiet. Yep. You're sitting there waiting for your time to the uh, hunting time mm-hmm. and you really don't want it to go loud because you'll hear it a country mile and you just kind of do that soft yep. little purr. 
and uh, it's just it's amazing that they'll carry. I, I used to do the box call, but I, I'm finding I can get more with my mouth call, and then the, the box call is kind of staying home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, oh, Tim Cs, good point. Some states prohibit a turtle shell being moved across the state lines. Oh yeah, yeah. There's you know the amphibians. Um, there's just a lot of regulations on that stuff. You got to be really careful about getting something or or buying something and taking. You know, you got to make sure you can you can possess that in in your state. So, and to confirm what I just said, the little puppy is not liking it. He must be listening to the live broadcast. Okay, and you're probably driving him crazy. Oh, good. Where's my call? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> he's, he's probably watching the screen, going, "What are those two guys doing?" Right, right. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm quickly learning the, my mouth calls, and but I. But my go-to one is definitely the pod call. Yeah. Mouth call I use to close a deal uh, if they're hanging up. And you're talking about, you know, having it in your mouth the whole time. What I'll do is once I get set down, if I'm in an area where I, I'm, I'm ready to set and start calling, I'll put it out. I'll get it and put it in my mouth. Yep. And if I don't have it in the roof of my mouth, I'll take and I'll roll it and I'll put it in my cheek. Almost like a pinch of tobacco. Yep. You and put it in your cheek, cheek, and... cheek and gum. Yep. And let it set there. But uh, that's that's kind of the way. Uh, I roll. You know, you're talking about last year. I didn't. I couldn't find my mouth calls. Had I had my mouth calls, I probably could have sealed the deal on the one that I missed. Right. Exactly. You know, like, I'm like, where's my it. mouth call? Right. <laughs> you know. It but now you're me. set. You got them here. You got them over there. Yeah. So uh, we'll be dealing with those, uh, showing the people uh, all these tricks and tips and tricks come uh, March when we're at the Turkey Classic for Cabela's. And you can throw everything but the kitchen sink at them, and it still won't work sometimes. Right. <laughs> That's what's frustrating. It, Deb will admit to this. We we did just about everything, and it hung up at about 60 yards, and all he did was go back and forth looking at us. Yep. He's wanting her, you know, she's supposed to come to him. He's right? not supposed to go to her. Right. And that was exactly what it is. Yep. And I'd really like to know, because we were in a blind, when we first heard him, when he first fired off, how close he was behind us. Mm-hmm. I don't, he was close, and I know he was pointed at us. Yeah, dude, he'd do a he, he circle? Looped, yeah, he circled around us, and it's like, you know, golf ball head. Right? Yeah. It's the way it goes, man. It is. It it, it, it happens. So, uh, uh, But definitely, uh, now's the time to sit there in front of the TV, your office, on your way to work. Start practicing these, practicing these things. Get them, get them ready. Get a YouTube video of somebody that's calling, and then try to pattern uh, after that. Tim's got a couple videos right on... Uh, Okay. He's got them on YouTube, and he, I think he's got them posted. Matter of fact, let me just take a quick look. He's got them posted right... On Facebook? On Facebook, yep. There you go. He's got a couple posted on Facebook. He's running his calls. Okay. So um, if you're interested in a pot call, get on Facebook, Lim Walker's Game Calls. Check them out. Check out the videos, how he runs them. Uh, he's down in West Virginia. They don't talk too much different turkey down there than they do up here. No, and find somebody in your area. You know, if if uh, you know, you're like, man, I just I don't know what I'm doing. I can't quite figure this out. NWTF is getting ready to hold a lot of their, their yes. workshops right now. Take your call to them with you and have somebody show you. Find a hunting buddy who chases turkeys. Believe me, there is a lot of people around the area that that hunt birds. So I they come this, across all across the United States. I got this wacko serial killer to. Get me started. Yeah, I don't know who who that would be. Right. <laughs> uh, NWTF, I think first weekend in April at Williams. I think so. Is the Flint chapter, right? Um, actually, I think, well, oh, there you go, breaking stuff. So I can't have anything nice in the studio. No. I think they're, they might actually, I don't know if they're April or for March. I have to check on the date. All right, well, we'll check on the date because, yep. great, you can go there, you can have them run a call for you, and they'll let you shoot a gun. Yep, absolutely. To feel it and to see how it feels. It's yep. a 20-gauge that they let you shoot. So, uh, I tell you what, uh, well, let's wrap up the podcast portion here. We're we'll running just a little bit long tonight and we'll talk about pattern and shotguns. There's something, a little trick I want to talk about right. here on the live stream afterwards. So, uh, for the podcast portion, we're going to wrap it up tonight. And uh, next week, what do we got going on? What are we next week? Be doing? I don't know what we're going to be doing next week. We're into March, right? We're fearlessly marching into, fearlessly marching into March. Two weeks from now, we'll be at Cabela's. Two weeks, we'll be. At Cabela's. Okay. So. We'll be into something. I know that. <laughs> yep. All right. That'll do it for us this week, folks. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Carbon Express. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Wind Scent Hunting Sense. Killer Food Plots. Seeds, Supplements, and Attractants. Cabela's. Spot Shooters. Limb Walker Turkey Calls. Antler Action. Family Tradition Tree Stands. And Twisted Mind Bow Strings. Thank you.
Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe. Until next week on the Up North Journal.